I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time. I've known people who have gotten chronically injured falling on ice and snow. Not just one or two, but a lot of people. So I've decided to do a test on some options ranging in price from $10 to $25 that anybody could purchase and use to keep themselves from being injured or worse. I've got a full range of really quick to put on to, they say, these are ice crampons. I've used ice crampons and these are not ice crampons. They look like something. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's like two extremes here. This video is important. I hope you watch it. I've slipped a bunch of times. I've fallen on ice. And I've been lucky so far that I haven't gotten hurt really bad. Some other things to consider. Can you wear these in the inside? Can you go to the store with these on? How easy are they to take on and off? We'll explore all of those options using a standard boot. And then we'll go outside and I've designed a... <laughs> I've taken the kid's sandbox, put a tarp in there. It's got about four inches of solid ice. Take these options out on and actually physically test them under the worst conditions. So let's go to a top-down shot and get started. We're gonna evaluate these five options on usability. In other words, how easy are they to take on and off? Could you wear those in a home, out, walking around a store? I wouldn't go to a mall in them. I'd probably take them off if I was in a restaurant. Most of them come with some sort of bag and even some spare parts. This one on the left says ice climbing crampons. I have ice climbing crampons. I have climbed on ice. I have gone up Mount Whitney in crampons and these are not gonna cut it for ice climbing. An icy trail in the woods? That's probably what it's more inclined to help you with. You definitely probably can't wear this out and about walking around the neighborhood unless the roads are completely solid ice. That's a nice little zipping container. And it's got some straps. I didn't see those. They all have straps. Don't get one that doesn't have straps. This has a strap and it's pretty small. I'll post a link down below to all of these. You can get them on Amazon. You probably can get them other places. Maybe a little cheaper. Who knows? These on Amazon are $22, $23. These snow tracks by Yak Tracks. I got them at Costco last weekend for 10 I like the low profile of this because I feel like I could actually walk around a store, maybe go into a restaurant. I wouldn't want to damage their floor on any of these. I wouldn't want to damage my floor. This has a nice little rounded tip on it and it's got some raised rubbers. We'll see if that helps. This has the raised tips on it also. Eventually you're going to wear these spikes down. This is probably one of the cheapest options and it actually came with two sets. It looks like it's easiest to go on, but the profile is pretty aggressive. But endurance, we'll have to test it over time. I have a friend in Colorado who is getting a lot of snow, and he bought the one with springs on it. I'll post that down below. I'm not sure I recommend that. It doesn't have enough strength in the design of the rubber or whatever it is. Although the springs probably aren't going to damage your floor like any of these spike options would. I've moved these all up. Now I'm going to just go down the line here and put them on the boot. This one has a nice little elastic strap to it, and we'll just put it on one. It's the same for both. Stretch it out a little bit, put it right here between the back and the front of the shoe. This gives you a sense of the profile. Looks like it would work fairly well, but the truth is on the ice. Snow tracks. Usually the tab will be in the back. All right, first of all, this is kind of tight. Well, that's on, I think. You can make some adjustments. Then you have a strap here. You got really need a strap to keep these on. And probably the more you use them, they'll stretch out a little bit. But you also get a sense of how they'll go on your shoe. You run it through this slide here. And then you Velcro it down. And you know which one you got. Snow tracks. Unlike this one that only goes right here in the center, which I think is not a problem. We'll see. You've got... Spike coverage all the way across here, here, and here. Will it stay on the boot? 
You know, I might have to walk around the yard and then get back on the ice just to get a sense of things. But putting it on correctly is the key for all of these. Tab in the back. That sits in there fairly well. I'm gonna adjust it up in the front. As opposed to the snow tracks, this one seems to do fairly good coverage on the boot. It's all the way around, it's in the front. And then you put the straps on. I don't think this came with any instructions. All right, so you run it through here like this. Make sure that's nice and cinched down. Look at twist the rubber, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. And there. The things I like about this, the profile, the way to describe this probably, well, they've put golfing cleats in there. It goes around the shoe well. You got to make sure you get the right size. I don't like this on either side. And I'm sensing that's a weak point in the design. Here's the deal. We don't pull it tight all the way across. It looks like you got a little grip on your shoe over here, but for the most part, you're relying on the cleat. Taking all of these off is easier than putting them on. Now, this is Extremis. This is a lot like the snow tracks. You really gotta pull on it. Oh wait, caramba. Well, I guess you gotta center it in the front of the shoe first. I guess you don't want them to fall off, but there we go. All right, well, that's pretty good. This one seems a little more stabler. They give you straps too. They have a nice mesh bag and the stuff will drain out. I like this design. It seems a little more rugged than this does. This is kind of like a soft noodle-ish rubber. This is a good design here too. I like how it goes over the top. I really think this is going to support well and you may not even need the strap. But I'm going to put it on there anyway because they provided it to me. And that sits much better here than this one does here. So I like that part of the design. Now let's just run the strap over. Oh boy. Not sure there's enough. Yeah, that's not going to work. But that doesn't seem right. Maybe they go up here. You may not need the strap, and I'll walk around on the ice without it, but if you're going to go for any period of time, more than a light walk on a relatively controlled surface, you probably need the strap. That's a little better. Just barely get a piece on there. That's on set. I need a longer strap on this one. The strap that came with this one, five inches longer, and that makes all the difference in the world. These straps are way too short. So Extremis, you saved yourself some money on your design, but it doesn't work. This one actually has back and it has a left. I put it in like this first. And if you're going on a mountain trail, snowy, would I go climb ice with this? Definitely not. Would I hike on ice on this, like a glacier or something? Maybe. This one's dangerous. I feel like it's gonna spike me or something. But whereas I think this one's city, neighborhood, city, neighborhood, city, neighborhood. This probably could do either hiking trail or city, neighborhood. This one is a trail version. Now that's on there pretty good. I don't know if I even need the straps. I'm not sure what it would do for me. I wouldn't go and walk around a neighbor's house with this. I wouldn't even walk in their driveway because you'll probably offend them with these dangerous spikes. The spikes on those are about half an inch. The design looks like it's pretty good. Taking it off. Be careful. You don't want to kind of bring your chest in here and ugh. <laughs> try to avoid that, but it comes off pretty easy. Not bad at all. Now that we've actually done the first look and test of these, putting them on, let's go outside, walk around on ice and snow and see how it does. Here's our test setup. A six foot by six foot, four to five inch thick slab of ice. So the diagonal's a little more than that. You can see I'm using my trekking poles because I'm a little nervous being on this ice. So I'm just gonna walk across. This is the baseline, nothing. Tea. Very slippery. First one, the orange strap. Not bad. Trying to slide out like I did before. 
with the baseline. It's giving me a little added support on the ice. And if you put them down, the orange is a good indication of where they are. This one's the Snow Tracks by Yak Tracks. It was really hard to get on. I had to actually take my gloves off to get it on. And these are thin gloves. Much more stable than the orange straps. Yeah, I, I don't feel much sliding at all. Yeah, this is solid. I feel comfortable going out in any kind of wind conditions. I think you could even walk in snow first or snow and ice and you're going to get the boot protection. But yeah, this works out well. This is the one I called the golf cleats. It's called J Shiname. Again, there's probably variations in different companies you can buy these from. A lot easier to put on. I could put it on with the gloves. It's a lot more stable than the snow tracks as far as staying on your boot or shoe. Yeah, I feel like it's really gripping. Of the three so far, this is the best by far. This one's the Extremis. I didn't even put the strap on this one because it's not going to stay on. So I'm going to actually demonstrate how it's going to be loose like that when you're walking around. It's a lot like the snow track except for the cup here is better and this over the back of the shoe or the boot is better. So let's test it out. a little bit of sliding, which is interesting. I wouldn't have thought that was going to happen. Not too bad. But the strap thing really bugs me. These are the big daddies. It's the sport near crampons. Let's see how they do. Well, you're definitely not going to sneak up on anybody with these things. They're loud and crunchy. They're comfortable. They're really chewing up everything. They're like chains on tires. If I was going out to a trail or really extreme ice conditions, this is what I would use. Would I ice climb with them? Heck no. There's, I have ice crampons. I'll show that probably in another video if you're interested. But holy mo, these will do the job. They're fairly easy to take on and off. I'm not sure you need that strap right here, but I put it on because that's what they provided. And you're just going to eat things up. So be careful using it on your blacktop, your concrete, even like a nice mason stone driveway or sidewalk. I'd be really careful walking with these on there. For those who stay till the end of the video, some magic thoughts. Are all five of these options better than no cleats? Yes. If I was to rank them on goodness, I would say these are number one. These are number two. These are number four, only because they're pretty big and aggressive. And then these, and then in last place, the Snow Tracks by Yak Track. Yak Track is a very popular brand. You'll see a lot of people using these, but when I shot the video outside, one of them had actually come off the boot. So it's a good thing they have straps on. Maybe with a running shoe where there's less of this around it might be a little better but for a boot not so much you could probably wear these around the neighborhood maybe in a store but you'd have to be careful about if it was a wood floor or not restaurant same thing i would probably take them off no matter what if i wanted a pair 
in the car for emergencies, this is your pair. You can get two of these, at least where I got mine, for almost the price of one. So for a couple bucks more, I got a set of two. If you're doing like heavy trails or trails that don't, they're not managed well, this is your winner. But do not ice climb in these. <laughs> they are not ice climbing crampons. And no matter what you do, going outside, and don't feel bad about this, even if you're just going to the restaurant, take your trekking poles and make sure you get the carbon tips. And pretty much all of them have them, and they have these nice little knobs that I use most of the time during the summer when I'm hiking around. But in winter, these things may make the difference, even with cleats, but certainly without, of keeping you safe and having you not fall down. Do I need the strap on this? No, you don't. Am I disappointed that the strap is so short? Yes. Extremis, you gotta do a better job at that. I like your cleats because it's got this nice little pocket here and it fit well around the back. You sent me some spares and you thought a lot about the bag so that it drains out. But then you shorted us on Velcro straps. What's up with that? Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in evaluations of all kinds of sports gear, designs of sports gear and photography equipment, making and breaking things, home repairs, I even do costumes, cosplay, and props. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.